PF is the dynamic routing protocols. And uh, as we know, in the router's routing table, there are three stores to get the root items. One is direct connected, and the second is a static route we have already discussed. And the third is from the dynamic routing protocols. Of course, dynamic routing protocols, there are many types, RIP, OSPF, ISIS, BGP, and so on. The OSPF is the most widely used and is the most famous. Okay, so in this chapter, we will discuss the basic concept of the OSPF and then describe how OSPF worked, how OSPF form neighbors and how OSPF exchanges the LSAs and synchronize the LSDBs and so on. And then to discuss how to configure the OSPF on the Huawei's network device, on Huawei's routers, okay? And then first, we should have the basic concept of the OSPF. The OSPF, the full name of the OSPF is Open Shortest Path First. Okay, the open means it's a standard, not proprietary, okay? That's all the vendors, all the manufacturers can use this protocol, okay? The shortest path first, just the algorithm that OSPF use, okay? And the OSPF have the advantages. First, uh, the overhead of the OSPF traffic, that OSPF is a protocol is needed to exchange information between different routers. So the overhead of the OSPF traffic is small, okay, is a little, okay. So uh, can minimize the overhead of the traffic on the link, okay. And then the rapid convergence the OSPF converges very fast. That means when the network changed, then the calculation of the new route will converge in several seconds. Okay, it's very fast, of course, especially very fast to be compared to the other protocols such as the loop. Okay, the loop, convergence of the loop need tens of seconds. Okay, the OSPF converges fast. Because the OSPF use the triggered update, that means when something happened, for example, the link is up or the link is down, then an update sending out to other routers, other device, spreading all the networks immediately. Okay, this is the triggered update. Then other routers will calculate and then converge. Okay, that's very fast. And then scalable. The OSPF can support a large network, uh, such as a network containing thousands of routers, okay? But other protocols such as a loop cannot support such large, okay? There are some limitations, okay? The OSPF is scalable. And then the accurate route metrics. Okay, the OSPF use the band widence to calculates the metric, calculates the cost, not as the loop. Loop use hops, okay? Hops means one hop means one router and not refer to the band widens. So the link with two megabps and with 100 megabps, as we think, that's quite different, okay? But the loop think these two link as the same. But the OSPF can use different metric to measure these two links, okay? This is the advantages of OSPF. Of course, OSPF has many other advantages, many other features. So uh, we just described uh, these advantages. And then when we discuss how the OSPF is works, so we go through the idea how OSPF is worked. Okay, this is a picture describe the idea of the OSPF. First, when the router on the network, he must know 
what network is connected to this this router okay and then the router must know who is its neighbor okay who is its neighbor so this content okay this information we call it link state okay link state and then the router itself will form a link state advertisement to describe the link state of itself and all the other routers is the same okay is the same then these routers will exchange the ASAs between each other okay after exchange then each router will get all the ASAs of the network that means the router A got these informations and the router B also got these informations and the router C also got these informations then after the routers got these informations that means this router will know all the states of the routers in the network okay so using this ASAs the router can know all the topology all the topology of the network okay and uh, all these ASAs will form a database we call the link state database okay and then with this ASDB with these informations the routers can calculate can calculate the route of course first we will calculate use the SPF algorithm to calculate a shortest past the tree okay of course the router itself is the root of this tree okay and then all the other routers maybe the node in the tree okay and all the paths will be the branch of the tree and all the networks will be the leaf of the tree okay after this calculation then the router will know if this router wants to get to the certain network what is the best path okay so after the shortest path tree is formed then the router can easily get the root items okay and put into the routing table okay and from this process we can know that the last two steps is happened inside the router okay the router gets the AISDB then calculate by itself each read each router calculated by itself okay in the first two steps the two routers the all the routers we are to discover neighbors okay discover neighbors to form AISA and then to synchronize AISDB that means all the routers get the same AISDB okay these two steps step one to form neighbors and step two to synchronize the AISDBs these two steps happen between different routers okay so uh, the most important steps are the first two steps we will discuss later in this chapter okay and then for this idea to working okay we need some basic concept first is a router ID okay is a router ID the router ID is a number is a number this number is to uniquely identify a router identify an OSP router in the network okay and uh, of course this number is unique identified just as our names okay the name of the router in the network and then if the router got the AISAs then identify this AISA is mine okay use the router ID to identify and the router ID you can configure manually okay this is a 30 32 bit 32 bit number okay you can configure manually but if you're not configured the OSPF will choose the router ID automatically first the OSPF will choose the router ID from the logical interface IP address logical interface that means if you create such as a loopback interface then we'll choose the 
routine ID from logical interface, from rule-back interface. Of course, if there is more than one rule-back interface, then we will choose the maximum number, okay? The maximum IP address, okay? And if you are not create the logical interface, then the router will choose the root ID from the physical interface. Okay, the IP address configured on the physical interface, then we will choose one. The, of course, the maximum number, okay? This is the root ID, okay? And then, after root ID is choose, then the routers will form neighbors between each other. Form neighbors between each other. But it depend on the different data link data link types. For example, in the Ethernet, in the Ethernet, this is a multi-access network, okay? Multi-access network means on this data link, on this network segment, maybe there's more than two routers, okay? That means if finding neighbors can find more than one neighbors on this link. So, but on the P2P, for on the on the serial interface, on the serial interface, the router, because the serial interface only have two end, okay? So, the router can only find one neighbor. So, there is a difference, okay, depend on the data link layer technologies. So, the OSPF, if suitable to this data link technologies. So, there are different network types. Okay, for the Ethernet, the OSPF defined a network type we call the broadcast. On this broadcast, on broadcast network, the OSPF will find more than one neighbors. Okay, will find more than one neighbors. And uh, of course, they will discover each other and they need to exchange information. So, if we exchange information each other, okay, there are too much information, okay, too much information to exchange. But this information is our same. So, the OSPF on the broadcast network defined a DR, okay, the signature route. That's all the other routers synchronize the ASDB with the DR. So, this is the idea of the network type, of the broadcast network type. In the broadcast network type, we will select a router as a DR, and all the other routers will synchronize the LSDB with DR. Because they are synchronized with the, for example, with the DR, router B, then all the other routers, LSDB, is synchronized, okay? This is the first network type broadcast network type. But there are still other network type, such as a P2P network type. The P2P network type is used in the serial link, okay? The serial link usually use the PPP or HDLC protocol. Of course, this is a layer two protocol, okay? Layer two protocol. On these two links, the router will always find one neighbor on this link. So, this OSPF defines this network type. That means on this link, the OSPF will always form find one neighbor. So, no DR will not, no DR will selected. Okay, they do not need to select a DR. They just form neighbor each other. Okay, so the P2P link, OSPF running on P2P link, it's very simple, okay? It's very simple. Okay, and then there are still other network types, two other network types. These two network type is suitable for spatial data link layer protocols, ATM and FR. And uh, these two data link technologies nowadays is seldom used. So we just know it, okay? There are two types. And NGMA, non-broadcast multi-access network type, and the point to multi-point network type. Okay, on the NGMA network network type, 
this is emulate the broadcast network. So the DR will still be choosed. Okay, but because of the, uh, this is not the same as the broadcast. So the DR selection should be carefully, okay, should be carefully. And uh, in the P2P, P2MP network, P2MP network, it's emulates the P2P network, okay? Emulates the P2P network. So, the no DR will are selected on this network type, okay? And uh, now, the OSPF, in the OSPF standard, they support four network types, broadcast, P2P, NDMA, and P2MP, okay? We should know all these four network types. For OSPF to calculate the root items, they first need to form neighbors and then synchronize their LSDDs. And then we know there are different network types, broadcast network type and P2P network type. Of course, there are still two others, NDMA and P2MP. We just focus on broadcast and P2P. And as we know, in a P2P, there are only two routers, okay? They just form neighbors and synchronize LSDB each other. That's simple. But in the broadcast, maybe there are many routers attached to one network segment. Okay. In this scenario, there are four routers, okay? This is the Ethernet, and the four routers attached to one network. Then they can discover each other as a neighbor and they will need to synchronize LSDB each other. Then, if each router synchronize LSDB each other, okay, then there's many traffics, okay. So, the protocol, the OSPF, designed a designate the router mechanism. That means, during this, among these routers, among these routers, we will choose one router, such as the router D, as the designate router. And all the other routers synchronize their AISDB with the router D, okay? So, the RTA's AISDB is the same as RTD, RTB's is the same as RTD, and RTC's is the same as RTD. Then, as a result, the RTA's AISDB also is the same as the RTB's, and also is the same as the RTC's, okay? Yeah, this is the concept. And the protocol think if there is only one RTD as a designated route, then maybe a problem happens and then the RTD is done. Then the other routers cannot synchronize, okay? So the protocol OSPF also designed a backup designated route. Okay, as the designated route is a backup. So the other routers synchronize with RTD and also synchronize with RTD, the backup designated route. Okay, so as a result, we designed an DR and BDR for the broadcast network of the OSPF. Also, uh, in the NGMA network type, there are also there exist an DR and the BDR routers, okay. And then, after we design a DR and a BDR, so the neighbor have two states. One is neighbor state. That means these two routers, RTA and RTB, can see each other, okay? They attach to the same network segment, so they can see each other. That's no problem. And then, the RTA only synchronized with DR and BDR, okay? So, this DR and BDR, the relation between these two routers, we call it adjacent. Adjacent. That means the AISDB is synchronized between these two routers, okay? So, this is a two state. And uh, what's the relationship between these two states? These two states first is a DR. See? These two routers, they can discover each other, okay? And then they will form adjacency to synchronize LSDB each other. Okay, 
in the, of the in the P2P network, it's the same, okay. But in the broadcast network, all the routers are neighbors, but only DR and BDR will form adjacency with other routers, okay. From the down to four, that's a formal adjacency, okay. And first, the two routers did not discover each other. That's a down state, okay. And then init. Init means receive a hello packet. They will receive a hello packet, sending hello packet to each other, okay. Then, if they can see each other, then get the two-way state, okay, get it to two-way state. And uh, if only one side see another side, that's in initial, that's, a, they see each other, that's the two-way state. And then, after the two-way state, they will synchronize their ISDB, the other state, ex start, exchange start, and then exchange, and then loading, and then fall. And uh, for, for the meaning of each state, each state we will discuss later okay first the neighbor discovery the two routers discover each other they are sending hello packet each other okay in this hello package we can see there are the same many field okay the hello interval uh, in the ethernet a broadcast network the hello packet sending out periodically every 10 seconds okay every 10 seconds. And then, the router priority. This priority is used to elect the DR, okay? The higher priority will elect the DR. The low priority uh, will not elect as the DR, okay? Where as the DR other, work as the DR other. And then, the router dead interval. That means the two routers will sending hello each other then, the RTB will repeatedly receive the hello from the RTA, okay? And then, if the RTA is lost, then how many times will the RTB regard the RTA is lost, is done? The default value is the 40 seconds on the Ethernet, on the broadcast network, okay? And then, this is the DR and the BDR, okay? DR and the BDR. Uh, before this election, this is zero, 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 zero. And after election, if they have elected one router as the DR, and then we'll put the DR, the router ID, the router ID here, okay? Put the DR's router ID here, and the BDR's router ID here. And then the neighbor, if RTA have discovered RTB as its router, then the RTB will list here, okay? Of course, in the broadcast, maybe more than one neighbors, then they can list it more than one items. Neighbor, 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 this is a neighbor list, okay? This is the neighbor list. They are well listed here, the neighbor's root ID. If not discover anything, then this will leave empty, okay? Leave empty. Okay, this is a hello packet. Then, in the DR and the BDR selection is also happened in this stage. That two routers will use the hello packet to elect who is a DR and who is a BDR. Okay, so such as in this Ethernet network, Ethernet, then all routers sending out sending out a hello packet. And in the hello packet, the field the priority sets the priority of each router, okay? The bigger value got the higher priority. So in this scenario, this RTC will elect as the DR, okay? And of course, the RTB will elect as the BDR, okay? And then all the other routers will synchronize with the DR, okay? And the priority value zero is special. That means this router will never be elected as a DR, okay? And uh, in the Ethernet, by default, it's a broadcast network, okay? Broadcast network. 
in broadcast network will elect DR and BDR. And uh, if this is a serial interface, okay, if this is a serial interface, then this is uh, not a broadcast network. Serial interface is a P2P network, okay? So in P2P network, the routers will not elect the DR. But sometimes there's a scenario that the two routers connected by the Ethernet, okay? But on this Ethernet, it's a P2P Ethernet link. Just, that means on this link, there are only two routers. So on this scenario, where these two routers select the DR or not, yes, they will still select the DR and the BDR. But as we know, there are only two routers that select our DR and the BDR. There is no use to select the DR and the BDR. So if we don't want the OSPF to select the DR on this network, we can configure as this, OSPF network type P2P. Then this network will be changed, will change the network type to P2P, okay? That means the OSPF network type by default on the OSPF is, on the Ethernet is the broadcast, but you can change it using the configuration, okay? After configuration, this network will become P2P network, okay? This is a designated router selection, okay? Also, on this network, we will select a BDR, okay? Of course, the BDR is the, has a secondary higher priority, okay? And then, this is as a backup as a, of the DR. If the DR is lost, the DR is down, or this link is down, then the BDR will, the, will change the lower as the DR, okay? Will take the responsibility of the DR, okay? And uh, this is the DR and the BDR. Then, after the DR and the BDR is selected, then they will synchronize their ASDB, okay? Yeah, they have already discovered each other. Then, then they will form, they have formed the neighbor relationship, okay? Then, after forming the neighbor relationship, they will synchronize ASDB, okay? In the P2P, the two routers synchronize ASDB, no problem. And then in the Ethernet, is a broadcast network, the other routers, the DR others, only synchronize with the DR and the BDR, okay? And then, when they begin to synchronize, first, they will send each other a list, a list, a list, a list of LSAs in their LSDB. For example, the router A got an LSDB, okay? LSDB, they are the LSAs. Okay, each router have a LSA. The router is LSA, maybe there's other network, other routers, LSA. LSA1, LS2, LSA3, and so on. There are many LSAs. But the router B also have got a list of the LSA. That's the LSA B, LSA D, C, okay? So, they have different LSAs, but each other did not know who has the LSA, who has what LSA. So use a DD packet to exchange the list. I got this, this LSA, and what your LSA? Okay, the DD means database description, just describe what I have got in my LSDB. And then, after they exchange the DD packet, then they know each other who got the what LSA, okay? And uh, if the LSDB have already been the same, then they will not exchange the content of LSDB. But if after the change, the router A, router B found there is some LSA that I did not have, then router B will request this LSA to send to router B, okay? Here, 
to establish a full state. That if AISA, RTA, AISDB in the RTA lack a certain AISA, then we are request, link state request to ask RTB to send the content to RTA. Then the RTA use the AIS update to send to RTA. Then, of course, if more than one can request again and then update. And after the finished, okay, the AISA will confirm use the AIS ACK and then acknowledgement. And then the state will go into the full. The full means the AISDB of these two routers are synchronized. Okay, this is the core state, core state that for two routers to form neighbors using hello package, okay, to discover each other. Then to synchronize AISDB, use DD packet and then use AISR, AISU, and AISACK, okay. After that, the AISDB is synchronized. That means the router A and the router B, all the routers in the network have the same AISDB, network AISDB. And then they can calculate based on this AISDB. Okay. Of course, the calculation of the AISDB, calculation of the router happened inside the one router and so we not discussed here, okay. SPF have synchronized their AISDB, then the routers can calculate the best route. Okay, the best route is decided by the cost. Okay, and the, the cost, there is a default cost value. The default cost value is based on the, here, 10 powers 8, then divided by the band widence. Okay, for example, there is an Ethernet, that's a 10 mega, okay? 10 mega means 10 powers, 10 powers 7, okay? So the value is 10, okay? 10 powers 8 divided by 10 powers 7, then it's 10. And if this is, if this is a fast Ethernet, fast Ethernet, just 100 mega, okay? 100 mega, just equals 10 powers 8. So, the fast Ethernet, the cost is one, okay? Of course, there, maybe there's a question. If the gigabit, okay? Gigabit means 10 powers nine. Then what is the value? 0 0.1, is this right? No, the cost always bigger than one, okay? So if the value, the calculate the value is smaller than one, then always be one, okay? This is the default cost of each link, okay? And uh, we can change the default behavior. For example, we can change the reference band widens. Okay, the reference band widens default is 10 powers 8. That means 100 mega, okay? We can change it to this 10,000 mega, okay? The 10,000 mega. Okay, so in this, if this reference band widence is 10,000 mega, then the gigabit Ethernet will got the value 10, okay? And the fast Ethernet will got the value 100, okay? We have got the difference value. Of course, if you want to change the reference band widence, okay, you need to change it on all the routers, all routers in your network. If you only change the one simple router or one router of your network, then the calculation may be confused, okay? May be confused, okay? And then there's another method to change the cost of the link. Just under the interface, then configure this. Of course, by default, this interface, there's a, there's a cost. But if you manually configure it, then this value will be used, the 20 this link got the cost 20 will be used. Okay, this is the OSPF cost. This is used to calculate what is the best, best path to the destination. Okay, of course, the smaller the cost, the better the path, okay? And uh, then 
the shortest per tree. For example, now this is the router C. Router C calculates the best path to these two networks. Okay, then there's different paths. Then after the calculation to this network, I think this path is the best. And to this network, maybe there are two paths have the equal cost. Okay, so if there are two paths of the equal cost, then these two paths will both put into the routing table. Okay, so this is a 10 network, then got the next hop. Maybe this next hop is, is uh, router D. Okay, router D, 10.4. Okay, and then the 20 network. There's two paths, so got two net next hop. One is the router D and another is the router A, okay. So this is the calculation of the OSPF and got the result, the best path, okay. Then the OSPF have calculated all the paths. The calculation of the route of the OSPF uh, is finished here, okay. Then the OSPF also have a concept of areas, areas, and the OSPF can contain multiple areas. Of course, also the OSPF can contain only one area. Of course, when this network, there's only one area, then this is a single area network, okay? And in the single area, the ASDBs of each router will be synchronized, okay, will be synchronized. And then calculate, calculate the ASPT shortest path tree based on the AISDB, and then got the best path to each network in the area. Okay, this is the process we have already discussed. But in another scenario, we can configure an OSPF network with multiple areas. Okay, in the multiple areas. Just as this, there are different areas. In the multiple areas, then, in the center of the network is the area zero. The zero means this area is special. This area we call the backbone area. Okay. And all other, all other non-zero areas are normal areas. They must connect to backbone area. And then they will exchange a loot between area zero and then non-zero area. And also the area zero will be a transit area that relays the loot information of area one and area three to other areas, to area two, okay? Then all the network can communicate each other, okay? This is the concept of the multi-area. Okay. In uh, how to configure, how to configure the OSPF area. Then the configure of the OSPF is just as this. First, we can configure the OSPF process. This is the process number. Okay. Then enable an OSPF process on the router A. In uh, under this, we can specify the router ID of each router, uh, but this is optional. If you are not configured, we have already discussed, the router ID will automatically selected, okay? And then, this is area zero. Then specify a network. This network included this interface. That means this interface is running in area zero, okay? Running in area zero, okay? Then, of course, in the router B also can configure this and then this interface running in area zero. Then these two routers, okay, will exchange information, exchange the hello packet and then synchronize ASDB and then calculate the, calculate the loot, okay, to use the SPF algorithm. Okay, this is the basic OSPF configuration. And after the configuration, we can check if we configure correctly. We can see using the display OSPF peer. Then we can see on the router A, we can see the router B, if the router B is exist. If it exists, 
and then the state is full. Ex exist that means these two writers have discovered each other. If the state is full, that means they have synchronized their AISDB, okay? Of course, if they are connected by an Ethernet, so Ethernet is a broadcast network, okay? So they will select the DR and the BDR, okay? And uh, there are the same parameters, for example, the timer, dead timers. Of course, the hello timer is a 10 seconds and dead timer is a 40 seconds, okay? And uh, this is the check of our configuration, the result of the OSPF, okay? And uh, between OSPF neighbors, we can also configure a password, a password. The configuration is as this, an uh, interface, on the interface, we can configure OSPF authentication mode. Then, mode is MD5, and then the password is Huawei. Of course, you can choose a string. And this configuration must be configured on both sides, okay? Then, when these two routers, two phone neighbors, they will check if the other side have the same password. If the password is not the same, they will not form the neighbor, okay? If the same, then they will pass and then to form neighbor. Okay, this is the authentication. And uh, you can check if they are using the, this password to check to authenticate each other. We can use the debug, debug OSPF packet. Then we can get the packet. In the packet, we can get the information. Okay, the authentication type and then the password. Okay, this is a configuration for OSPF authentication. Okay, and uh, there's another feature, the silent interface. Uh, on the OSPF, we can configure interface as a silent interface. If this interface is configured as a silent interface, then the RTA will not send hello packets out. We are not sent, of course, not only hello packets, all packets, all OSPF packets, such as DD, AISR, AISU, AISSK, we are not sending out. But as we know, the first packet sending out is the hello packet. So if not sending hello packet out, so RTB, of course, we are sending out, but RTA will not. So they cannot reach the two-way state, okay? There are no two-way state. So they will not synchronize AISDB. They cannot form neighbor, okay? So they cannot uh, synchronize LSDB and they cannot form adjacency. So these two routers will not form neighbors, will not form adjacencies, and they cannot calculate the loot between each other, okay? This is a silent interface, okay? And uh, of course, we can check can display OSPF interface, this interface, then we can see this interface is configured as a silent interface, and then no hello packet we are sending out. Okay, so if no hello, no hello packet sending out, so no neighbor will be found on this inter -neighbor. interface, okay, interface. Okay, then we got to the end of the OSPF, and there are two questions. What is the purpose of the data interval in the OSPF header? Okay, the data interval in the OSPF header, there are two fields. That's the hello interval and the data interval. Hello interval specified how long, what is the period the OSPF router sending the hello packet, okay? The data interval is to specify how long if the neighbor not sending the hello to me, then I will regard the neighbor is down, okay? This is the purpose of the data interval, okay? And then, in the broadcast network, what is the multicast address that is used by the designated router and the backup designated router for listening for link state updates? In the, the OSPF, when sending the packet, hello packet, they use the multicast. There are two multicasts used. 224.0.0.5 and 224.0.0.6. Okay, 
there are two address. And uh, this address is used for the normal OSPF routers, and uh, six is used for the OSPF routers as the DR. Okay, use as a DR. Okay, then we got to the end of this chapter.